good to be here with you all.
the foundation of the world, hovering over those waters. Yes. You who fell on our Jesus the Christ on his baptism. You who John spoke about while he was on that isle in Paris. Yes. You who speak to your church. We thank you, O oh Lord. Speak to us this day. Give us receptive ears to hear what you are saying. Yes. Minds to believe and understand. Hearts to receive. And hands and feet and bodies to go and do it. Amen. Not to just be hearers of the word, but yes. doers of your word. Yes. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit, your very Holy Spirit that is willing to indwell even us flesh. We give you glory and honor. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Today is Pentecost, y'all. The Holy Spirit has come. I would ask that you would stand in reverence to the reading of God's word. I will be coming from Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. I will read, and you can follow along. You don't have to read with me. I'm reading from the NRSV, New Revised Standard Version, so it may differ from what you have. But please follow along as I read aloud. Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phydra, Paraphilia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Syria, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, but Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I said. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only 9 o'clock in the morning. No, no, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smokiness. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Verse 21, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be Amen. Seated. 
Billy preached this morning, and we all know it to be true, we are living in difficult times. Amen. Divided times politically, economically, racially. We are bombarded with the news outlets affirming and reconfirming that there are wars and rumors of wars. It was just another terrorist attack in England. Sectarian violence, racial profiling, and modern day lynchings, modern day lynchings, even by people who say they believe in God. Lord, have mercy. Back in 1906, the Los Angeles Times reported that there was a new sect of fanatics breaking loose, weird babble of tongues, folks getting healed in a back room, one shack house. The Azusa Street revivals of the early 1900s must have been a sight for sore eyes, a sight for Christians indeed, in the midst of times not unlike our own labor union issues and vast unemployment, assassinations even. Theodore Roosevelt was the president, but because the president before him was assassinated. At least we don't have that going on now. Mm -hmm. Jim Crow and segregation was the law of the land. When the word says that there's nothing new under the sun, believe it does. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Azusa Street these revivals that spawned the Pentecostal denomination is described by onlookers as scandalous <coughs> and fanatical. Not just because of the weird language, not just because of the healings, but because black folks and white folks were there together. Amen. The Holy Spirit has the power to break down even racial Divine yes, amen. Listen to this. This is a direct quote from the LA Times in 1906. It was something very extraordinary that a white pastor from the South was eager to go to LA to be in fellowship with a Negro pastor. It was even more remarkable that those same white pastors went back to their congregations in the South and reported that they had prayed with the Negro in the spirit and they all received blessings. It was a time of marked harmony, real unity among the races, genders, and the classes. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit has the power and let the record show, even in these United States of America that is seeped in slavery and racism, it has the power to break even those wars. Amen. In our text this morning, we see the most profound mark of the Holy Spirit. It was a promise fulfilled. Our Lord said to his disciples before his ascension that they should wait in Jerusalem for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But you will receive power, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. <laughs> Don't miss it. You will receive power. Yes. Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, we got issues with power because power, we've seen powerful folks take it and misuse it. Yes. Amen. They want to dominate us and manipulate us and use force over us. But no, no, no. This power is a different type of power. This is an empowering power, relational, communicative. This power from the Holy Spirit breaks down walls and wants to draw into the family of God. Amen. And just like Jesus promised, the Holy Spirit came and baptized the disciples. They, through the power of the Holy Spirit, became effective witnesses. Yes. Just like he yes. said in yes. Jerusalem, to those who were close to them, to their family, to Judea and Samaria, to those who are strange, who are far off, who they even detested, and to the ends of the earth, yes. to those they knew nothing about, yes. but God saw and needed some folk to go and witness to. What can we learn today about Pentecost from the outpouring of the Holy Spirit today? Verse 1 in Acts chapter 2 says, When the day of Pentecost had come, 
they were all together in one place. In some translations said they were all together in the same place. What we must understand is that that was not by accident. They were all in the same place because of the Jewish feast of weeks when we celebrate the giving of the law, the Old Testament. And this realized promise of Jesus was God's yet again self-revealing God's self. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. This concept of being together in one place, in one accord, this is not just geographical location. Are we in the same place spiritually? Are we standing on God's promises like they were? They were in the same place, but they also had the same mind, the same heart. Believing what Jesus said was going to happen. We Amen. would receive power. If we would be like these disciples, if we, not only geographically in the same place, but catch this in the spirit in the same place, believing what the word of God tells us about us, that you are the head and not the tail, that you are above and not beneath, that you are more than a conqueror, yes. that although weeping comes, it may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. Are we in the same place spiritually? God is concerned with us, collective as he was there on that day of Pentecost, but praise God individually as well. God is no respecter of persons. Uh, it makes me laugh to read that now. That's, that's true. That's true. He even picked me too. But what about recognizing God who celebrates even the little black girl from me? Amen. Sometimes our society asks us if we came up with the concept of inclusion and diversity statements, and if we, for good business practices, um, find it important to have every voice heard in the room. Democracy. I, I'm a political science girl, and it sounds like a good idea, but look at what verse 4 says. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. They all received. Yes. Now this tongues that we're talking about is not just the tongues that you speak when you have that special secret language with God. These were known languages. Yes. Known languages related yes. to nation peoples. Yes. You heard the, the list, the roll call there. Even the Romans heard and the Cappadocians heard. This tongue that rested on the disciples was so that they could communicate the gospel to anyone at any time. Amen. Those tongues were able to communicate the gospel, the good deeds of God to people in their mother languages. It was yes. as if you heard your mother telling you yes. the good deeds of the Lord. Yes. These tongues that rested on the disciples was God's reversal of the confusion that happened when he divided tongues at the yes. Tower of yes. Babel. In Genesis, we know the story. They were going to build a tower to God, and God came down and divided the tongues. This is God doing a new thing on Pentecost. He makes sure that his disciples is able to speak the word of God to anyone, anywhere, in every language. God gave these Galileans the ability to communicate with people from all over the globe. How will he enable us? This day, his disciples who have the internet, we don't even have to go to people. We can just get on the internet and communicate with folks from all over the world. I believe Google <laughs> that has something where you can speak to it and it will translate for you. Yeah. Praise God for the ways that he is communicating even this day. But the gift of the Holy Spirit will break down dividing walls, not only of language, but also of ethnicity gender, class, and socioeconomic status. When Peter got up to preach, he said that the spirit is racially, ethnically inclusive. Listen, he said that there were by, they were by and large men that were preaching. The apostles were men. But Peter recounts Joel's prophecy about what would actually happen when the spirit fell fresh. You will Receive the Spirit poured out on your sons and your daughters. The Spirit 
is willing. The Spirit was willing to be poured out on old men and young men. The Spirit has no gender or generational bias. It has no class bias. Your slaves, the lowest economic status in any society, the Spirit will be poured out. This Holy Spirit that fell fresh then falls fresh on us today. But do we celebrate the diversity that God said would happen with his spirit? Do we celebrate the Jewish celebration of weeks? Many years they had this Jewish celebration and the first fruits were what they brought to God. The first fruits was with the uh, feast of weeks and the harvest was the same way. There was a harvest even then of men, of women. Everyone was supposed to uh, participate. And it was an inclusion of the marginalized and the disadvantaged. Are we the same way? Who do we say is allowed to preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Pentecost shows our need for unity and like-mindedness to be on one accord. God celebrates and is willing to embrace all into his family. Amen. But look at the end of the story. The power of the Holy Spirit was effective. Verse 21 says, Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We didn't, I didn't read it, but down on verse 41 and 47. 3,000 people were added to the church, and then another... Amen. Day by day. Yes. Yes. Amen. Have we seen that type of effective ministry of the Holy Spirit? Do we even believe that it can happen? Yes. We have been entrusted by our Lord with a great commission. We all know it. Matthew 28 and 18 says, Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. Go therefore and make disciples of, of them. And Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have come And remember, I am with you all, even to the end of the age. That is for us today. Amen. We are to be making disciples, Amen. going in light of the truth and the promise that we have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to show people what it looks like to follow Christ. The power of the Holy Spirit is willing to change the world. Do we believe it? We say we are followers of Jesus Christ and we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as examples of what Christ did, but are we enslaved to another master? Capitalism and greed, the lust of the eyes and the flesh and being consumed with the pride of life. A lot of folks will preach a prosperity gospel. All God wants for you is for you to have a, a Benz in a nice house. But when he said that you would receive the Holy Spirit, it was to receive power to be his witnesses. Yeah. Not that you should have a nice house. That may come along with it, praise God. But so that you would be his witnesses. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. The power of the Holy Spirit is not only willing to change the world, but transform us in the process. We see Peter, my favorite. Peter, who denied Christ there, getting up in the power of the Holy Spirit, making his first sermon, and he preached a good one, y'all. Transformed by his power, he reminded them of what was happening. You think they are drunk. No, no. This is what Joel said would happen. And he preached this gospel, the good news of Jesus, in which every person can be saved. Amen. Do we believe that today? Or have we told the Holy Spirit that his power is null and void? Do we believe that today? That by our lives, folks can be saved and set free? The real power of Azusa Street was in its interracial, multi-generational, gender, and inclusive nature. This is how the Holy Spirit decided to manifest itself. 
How does the Holy Spirit express himself today? Are we expecting, when you come to this place, do you expect to receive? Not only for you and your family, but something miraculous for the world out there. When people who believe in God assemble, something ought to change. Amen. I love Amen. that song. There should be a change in the atmosphere. If we are of the same mind, if we celebrate our diversity, if we understand that when we come together, it should affect something. Amen. Are we like those early apostles there in that upper room, believing the promises that we have been given? Amen. I thank God for allowing me, and I keep saying that, I never thought of myself that I would be a pastor. And I called pastor and said, Lord, I, I don't know what's going on. And he said, well, pray. <laughs> I, I wanted you to give me a better answer than that. <laughs> but that was the best answer that he could give me. And I'm so glad that he did. And God called me as I closed. I want us to think about the work that we have to do. Amen. It's been laid on my heart going to a predominantly white church in North Carolina. What would you have me to do? The Lord has given me a heart for reconciliation. When I look at Revelation and I see in chapter 5, they're all around the throne and it is every tribe, nation, and tongue singing yeah. praises. And they have that one song, that unity, and that same worthy is the Lamb who is slain. Amen. What are we doing here? Because that's what heaven's going to be like. Yeah. So we can't do it now. Will that even be heaven to us? Yeah. We have segregated churches. Yeah. Segregated lives. What is the effect? of the power of the Holy Spirit in us. I encourage us to realize that there is work to be done. Amen. That there is power living on the inside of us that this world has never seen. Celebrate your diversity and know that the Holy Spirit can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or even think. Yes. Yes. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that you did not find it robbery to pour out your very Holy Spirit on us. You who saved us, redeemed us, called us by name and love us, have chosen us to do your good work. Perfect those things which concern us, Lord, as we go and be your instruments, your vessels in this world, in this broken and chaotic world. But you, O oh God, you who are the Prince of Peace, you who spoke to a chaotic world in the beginning and set everything in order, you can do it again. By your power, we thank you thank that you will do it again. Let us be willing. Let us be ready. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.